after the through hike, I couldn't shake this feeling. All I could think about was going back. Put simply, it was Cold Mountain calling. And I would have gone solo if a certain someone hadn't insisted she come along. To spare you all the boring details, here's the abridged version. About three-fourths of the way up, we had to turn around. It was getting late, and if I couldn't find the supposed spring up here and a flat place to put the tent soon, I'd be putting us both in a pretty risky situation. So we made our way back to Deep Gap, running low on water and daylight. I could be disappointed things didn't go exactly how I planned, but with a sunset like this, Good morning. Good morning. Bright and early the next morning, packed up the essentials, and we started on our way back up the mountain. I had a banjo string made of golden twine 
Nora, stop. This is not your personal salad buffet. Shady Grove, my little love. Shady Grove, I know. Shady Grove, my little love. I'm bound to Shady Grove. What do you know? Turns out there was a spring up here, but we just didn't go far enough. I guess I could waste time kicking myself about it, but you don't know what you don't know, right? Nora, hold on, don't just, don't just walk. Let me put my back down. Now, I can't just sit here at the top of Cold Mountain and not turn a little attention to the book that made it famous. A lone man's tireless journey back home and the woman he left behind. It's about as captivating as it gets. And something about these mountains makes them the perfect backdrop for that kind of story. I am Maple, wayfaring stranger, traveling through this world of war. There is no sickness, toil nor danger. In that So I hiked the Art Lobe, just went back and summited Cold Mountain. This way. That should have satisfied the wanderlust, right? Well, not exactly. 